the laws of the market work as well in the political arena as they work in the economic arena. We have all of us had a tendency to look at economic organization and political organization in very different ways. When we come to the economy as economists, political scientists or whatnot, we say, well, it has laws of its own. We ask if you change this, what will happen? And we say, of course, we will treat people in the market as pursuing their own interests. The worker will try to get the highest wage, the consumer will try to get the lowest price, the employer will try to get the best deal, the producer will try to make the most profit. But then when we come to the political arena, we tend to look at it a little differently. We tend to say, well, now let's figure out what would be the right thing to do from the social point of view. Let's persuade our fellows to vote for it, and once we've voted for it, we'll have, ha we'll have uh, the results we want. But surely, we have to look at it from a different point of view. We have to say that people who are in the political arena are also people. They are also trying to do what's best for themselves. The politicians are in business. They are trying to maximize the number of votes they get, or maybe not the number of votes, but they're trying to act in such a way as to get enough votes to get elected. The bureaucrats, the, I don't mean that in any invidious way, uh, I'll come and become more invidious about them later, but at the moment I don't <laughs> want to start that way. You or I as a bureaucrat, if we're in that position, we're going to pursue our own interests. Now in saying that we pursue our own interests, they don't have to be narrow interests. The, the, uh, the great martyrs in the world have pursued their own interests as they have seen it. But everybody is going to pursue his own interest, as, as a great friend of mine, an economist at UCLA, Army Alchin, always says, there's one thing you can depend on everybody else to do. You can absolutely depend on them. You can always depend on them to put his interest ahead of yours. So if we're going to analyze the political arena, we have to look at that as a different kind of a market in which there is also competition. If the government is going to distribute a million dollars, for whatever program, no matter how, it will pay people to spend up to a hundred million dollars to get it to go to them instead of somebody else. If goodies are going to be distributed, well then you better go out and try to get your share of the goodies. If you have a perfectly operating market, if you have what we economists call equilibrium, you will end up just as equilibrium in the economic market leads to zero profits, so equilibrium in the political market leads to no net gain to anybody. Because you're going to distribute a million, people spend a million to get it, you're back where you started from. This is not a fanciful view. Consider the issuance of TV and radio licenses. If you can manage to get the FCC to grant you a license for a TV station, under the law you will pay nothing for it directly to the, T to the FCC that license will immediately be worth a considerable number of millions of dollars. We could name some fortunes in this country that have derived from that, and some of the names would even be known to you. Now, given that that's the process, it pays you. If you're interested in getting it to one of these free grants, so-called free grants, it pays you to devote a lot of effort and energy and money to making sure you get it instead of somebody else. And so you will go in for a big publicity campaign. You will wine and dine the appropriate legislators. You will see if there is some way in which you can indirectly get influence on the commissioners. You may put on a, a big program of getting public opinion polls, of developing a fancy package, and so on. You can see what happens. You spend money. And you, not only you spend money, there's only one of these going to be di distributed, but it'll pay 10, 100 people to spend some money in order to try to get it. And on the average, it will pay the whole of them to spend as much money in total as the value of the TV license wants distributed. Nobody has any net benefit, no benefit from that program. You take the case of urban renewal legislation. You have urban renewal. First of all, it will pay you to try to influence and spend money on influencing the legislature to have the particular area where you've got some property you'd like to get rid of 
included in the urban renewal area. And I may say, in this game, there are universities, some of which I have been associated with, which have not been innocent of playing this game. Once the urban renewal legislation is passed, it will pay you to bid among one another to get the property which is going to be taken over. So that the first proposition is that if you are going to spend somebody else's money, somebody else's money is going to be spent, there will be many claimants for it, and not only those to whom the well-meaning people initially intended it to go. In the second place, in this competitive game, who are the most efficient competitors? Is it the poor suckers at the bottom who haven't got any money? There may be no direct and close relationship between ability to compete in the political arena and ability to compete in the economic arena, but they're not wholly unrelated. Those people who have not had the qualities which enable them to succeed in the economic arena are not likely to have the qualities that will enable them to succeed in the political arena. Thank you.